Because recently, it's not that the government has not spent money on Sanskrit. So you have a lot of Sanskrit universities. You have, but unless we are able to make it cool and attractive, unless we are able to attract people, it'll never. It can never be fixed in that way. You know, it's not just a question of money. It's a question of imagination. Just how to mentally de-traumatize, de-stress, relax. And this is yoga nidra. So you go to all of this relaxation response, which got so much money from the National Institute of Mental Health to study all, to, to teach people all these things, is actually transcendental meditation. So I track all these things. Our own people don't seem to know that this has got huge brand value. And they don't Not seem to care. Not only products. One is at the product level. You could make actual products. The other is as a national brand of who we are. As a country's brand, we need to do that. And then things like, if you ask a, a marketing company, uh, that what is the profile, the behavior profile of uh, liberal white, liberal white, particularly liberal white woman. So the profile will be that she goes and does yoga. And goes and does vegetarian. yoga. Vegetarian. And she does. She's animal Buys, friendly. Buys. Uh, she's animal fair friendly. Fair trade uh, yeah. coffee. She's, she's animal friendly and eco friendly. So why don't we take khadi and brand it as eco friendly textile? Because this world wants these kind of images. So how you brand India, what it is good for, you know, can be a national resource and not only, not only for the people who are in those products, but even if you're selling some machinery or you're selling whatever you're selling, uh, you know, your reputation, your image of who you are as a supplier will be associated with that. Brand means what you're associated with unconsciously. So basically, we are sort of doing, it's a double whammy. We are not looking at who we are not understanding that deeply, nor do we also know enough about the others yes. to understand these specific niches that exist which, which can and be catered to. both have to be done together. Uh, we have a tradition we lost. It's called Purva Paksha and Uttar Paksha. And I explain that in my book. Purva Paksha means studying the other. So the Vedantins study the Buddhists and they study the other guys, this and that. The school of thought studies other schools of thought other intellectual ideas, other communities. That's called Purva Paksha. And Uttar Paksha is my response to that. So we've been debaters. We've been into uh, studying others for a long time and positioning ourselves and giving an answer. That's called competitive research. That's Absolutely. Today, industry research, competitive research is what we call Purva Paksha, Uttar Paksha. And as they say, that there were sometimes these famous debates between Buddhist monks and Sanatanis where they did Purva Paksha they did Uttar Paksh and the one who lost would burn himself to death. So the price of losing a debate was one's own life. And now I see these, these things which are called debates, which are hardly debates, which are people enclosed in silos who don't know about the other person's worldview and who come to a TV studio to just scream at each other, encouraged by the moderator. So from a culture of debating, we have really sort of uh, fallen into... Uh, complete sort of silo behavior. Yes. I think we're fragmented into camps of anger. Uh, camps of anger, mutual conflict, and it's getting worse. Uh, you know, this whole fragmenting a society into little groups and even smaller groups. Democracy, rather than healing and uplifting, it's turned into a... Uh, caste is more like a, a combat uh, lobby group. Uh, we have uh, in the US, we have political lobby groups. In Washington, there's thousands of them uh, for the cigarette industry, for the nuclear industry. Uh, industries have them, ethnic groups have them, religion has them. Every ideology kind of has their own lobby groups. And I think in India, uh, they're caste groups. So maybe it's because lobby groups are not legal or they're not, uh, they're not given the same sort of formal structure. But there you set up a lobby group, you register with the government saying, I'm setting up a lobby group, this is my lobby. Uh, the, uh, scope of my lobby and you file an annual return you get donations it's official you spend money it's official there's no it's not something sleazy or under the table, under the table. Uh, you are political funding is official you have to disclose that's all so I think uh, maybe if we had lobby groups uh, it may be there may be less dependence perhaps I don't know but the caste groups have become too strong so this divisiveness you cannot is so strong now that you cannot have Conversation, really objective con debate. conversation. Right. So this is, I think, uh, uh, back to the issue of what are some of the Indian assets. I would say family. Americans are suffering 
and at the cutting one of the cutting edges the divorce rate the, which is now happening here because we're getting westernized and the whole you know teen pregnancy and anger the 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 crime rate and and also with medicine with medical advancements people are living longer the geriatrics industry has made people live longer but the last 20 years of life is sort of unhappy life. very unhappy very isolated no family i used to be a hospice volunteer i done a lot of different kinds of volunteers to understand society i was also a volunteer for aids foundation where i would get them rights from the various government agencies and all that as a as a as a person who could negotiate for them and when i was a hospice worker they trained me to be the person who is going to help somebody who's dying who's decided that okay he doesn't need any more treatment there's no hope then he just wants to die but they need some help they need somebody these are very lonely people their kid would be somebody else in the, some other state they would send them some flowers greeting card but no real love so i would often be the last person they would talk to so it is amazing what all they have to say what their questions are and i would bring a lot of my philosophy to help them and it did help them so this is a very lonely society that in the us and we're becoming that way we're picking some of the bad habits